So what's going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here and we are back today. Um, I finally have time to talk to you more about this weekend. I know I rushed to make that first video about Gate Guardian because, you know, I saw it on stream so early on Saturday. I was like, dude, this is so great that, you know, Gate Guardian is getting dubs this early. I was kind of busy for the rest of the weekend. Now that I have time, we're going to look back at, you know, everything that transpired and a lot of interesting matches. It was probably my favorite YCS or Yu-Gi-Oh event to watch because I've never been this excited to see this many decks. I honestly don't mind watching Kashtira. Like a lot of meta decks are boring, right? Sky Striker, it may be fun to pilot, but it's a boring deck to watch. Labyrinth is, was pretty boring to watch. I kind of you know, skipped out on matches like those, but it was more of just like, I started to even hate Runic as well. Um, Runic was another deck that I just could not stand to watch because I don't know, it's just the same thing over and over again. And then they don't even have a battle phase 90% of the time. So you're just, the game gets prolonged for, you know, so much longer than it needs to go on. Kashira is one of those decks I don't mind watching. I do like seeing all the little interactions because there's a lot of technical play that goes on with Kashira. Um, at a higher level that I think maybe some, you know, average level players don't really pick up on. Even though I may not understand exactly why they're doing it, it's interesting to see how professional players I let the deck compare to, you know, your average Yu-Gi-Oh player. But this is, this video won't be about Cash Tira per se. It's more about this 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 guy on the left here, this this super heavy samurai who ended up I, I wouldn't say dominating because it it, it is still not a deck that i think topped the event um from from my understanding but it's a deck that was able to make it past this cashier player a deck that has been perceived to be the best deck of the format using a deck that hasn't really gotten much attention outside of the ocg where in ocg land right if we look at the last month's metagame report tier elements may be dominating and cashier may be right, right under it but ad emancipator has eight percent here right and when you look at the Ad Emancipator, more than 80% of those Ad Emancipator player players are using Super Heavy Samurais in their build, right? They're using Vernoself, the Shizu. Um, with that grass looks greener. Um, there are even some sample deck lists right here. And yeah, this is a 60 card build too, because you know they're playing grass and left arm offering to open the grass as soon as possible. They still have smoke grenade here. But yeah, it's basically because of these two new Pendulum Monsters, Super Heavy Samurais are actually enabled to do a lot more in the format. Um, on top of Bike, which really just discards to add any Super Heavy Samurai monster from deck to hand um, once per turn. But, you know, Soul Piercer is still the best one because it's a soft once per turn. Or it's not even once per turn, it's just every time it's sent from field to grave, you add a Super Heavy Samurai from deck to hand. So if you can loop this thing, you're gonna get a lot of progress going. And Ad Emancipator does seem like a weird deck to mix super heavies with because like how many rock types are you really playing? You know, but apparently it works. I couldn't tell you how, maybe it's because of the block dragon. Um, maybe it's, you know, because super heavy, it's just so generic that it allows you to do so much. But yeah, no, I mean, Super Heavy Samurai, like even even regular, just pure Super Heavy Samurai, just either Super Heavy by itself or with Vruno Self, still is getting results, which is a lot more than what we can see in the TCG right now, because whatever they're doing over here with Super Heavy Samurais, it's working. Whatever that's, that support from Cyberstorm Axis is doing for the deck, without a shadow of a doubt, it's working. Even on this this tournament, 422 participants. First place, Vernosilf Super Heavy. Now this is a super heavy focused deck with uh, the three Vernosilf monsters. Everyone started playing Statue now, I guess because if Block Dragon is in the meta and Tier Elements are still in the meta, shuffling back graveyard resources can still be significant. And because you're playing, you know, a lot of Verna Sylphs like um, this guy right here, so he can place any earth monster from the deck into the graveyard, meaning your Mudora can be used during your opponent's turn to shuffle back what they were possibly planning to use. Now, this particular build is apparently Gotham's turbo. You apparently turbo Gotham's out three to four times using your Verna Sylph statues. So two of them search uh, the other two. Right, so your fairy and your ducklings and haze 
both these search like she searches any Vernusov card and he searches any um, Earth Fairy, I believe. So that so that can search either your Mudora or your um, Forest here. And each time you can revive Gotham's one more time, meaning you can make Gotham's up to uh, four times in a turn and hand loop them for four. But yeah, crazy ass deck, lot, lots of fucking gas. The pendulums really help it out. Um, and Super Heavy is, is an amazing engine because now it, like it's way more consistent because you have Wagon, you have Soul Piercer, you have you have Bike. It's it's just there's so many ways you can get get into your combo. You have Ballista and he's not even playing Soul Claw. So I guess it's really only for the Tundler That's just to get you that draw too. But yeah, even in this 600 person event, Super Heavy Samurai, just pure Super Heavy Samurai made it to fifth place. You know, they do still have tier, not at full power. Tier isn't at full power here, but it's like they, they still have all the statues even though like um Merle isn't limited, Kikalos is still gone, Jaren's limited. This was before their most recent ban and Dragon Link is still going strong there. I think because of this new level two oh they, they do still have Chaos Ruler. Okay, never mind, that's why. Um they, they still have Protost over there, so Sword Soul is doing doing way better than it is over here. And yeah, even this Super Heavy Samurai build, which doesn't even play Gotham, so this isn't even hand loop. This is just basically just pure Super Heavy Samurai engine with hand traps like Bestials because Tear is still around and Shifter because Tear is still around and Gamma. And this is either Delta or Alpha. I forgot which one, but I know this is the one that negates spell cards. Effectively, <clears throat> Super Heavy Samurai did none of this before they got their Cyberstorm Axis support. But the whole point I'm trying to bring home is that apparently they might not need it. So in YCS London round five, Super Heavy Samurai was piloted and apparently, I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but um, they were not the losers in this in this uh, situation. And I want to go through this duel and figure out how, because I did not get to watch this live. Uh, we're going to turn down the commentators and we are going to get started with this duel. It looks like he's opened a hand of Soul Claw, which I was just talking about. Uh, I don't know the name of that other soul card in his hand, the one that he's he's just discarding right now to use the Vernosilf with. But basically, the Vernosilf will be able to discard itself and another monster, summon an Earth monster from grave, and then add a Vernosilf card from deck to hand. So he's going to add he's going to add Forest here. Which was kind of surprising to me because if you know about how Vernisilfs work, it's like he's going to be able to. Maybe he doesn't have enough cards in his hand, but he could have also searched another Vernisilf that would have also been able to discard itself, summon another, and then you could have searched him. So you could have gotten another summon in before you searched that particular Vernisilf. No, don't want to force, but he's going to use this one to drop Regulus from hand, mill the Soul Piercer and then summon back the Regulus. And from there, he's going to link one into the Scarecrow, which is the most essential combo piece for the deck. Scarecrow allows you to discard a card. Ah, yeah, I see why he searched it early now. He didn't have enough cards in hand to go through multiple Vernosilfs. Okay, so he gets to bring back Soul Piercer. And you can use a Soul Piercer for another link one of Scarecrow. Now, I don't believe he can use its effect again but it is an effective way to get Soul Piercer's effect going off to search a Super Heavy Samurai from deck and there's still no negates here. It's not like, you know, the, the negate would be able to do much since Regulus is on board, but now he uh, he searches a Soul Peacemaker, that's what it's called, and he's allowed to um, equip it to a Super Heavy Samurai monster from hand and then he can tribute that monster to summon one from deck. So he's going to equip it to the one in the main monster zone which it actually is important because the, this Link 1 Scarecrow cannot be used as Link material. I think the turn it's summoned, I think after that turn you can use it, but the turn it's summoned, you can't use it. So he's gonna go into Scales and Scales when it's summoned, it revives a Super Heavy Samurai from Grave in defense. So he gets to bring back Soul Piercer and now he gets to kind of loop this Soul Piercer like this. See what I mean, you know? Um, and he's going to, oh, okay, yeah, I'm like, what are you 
going into your deck for. He's going to link to for Ballista. Ballista, if you're an Earth Machine player, you're very familiar with this card. Um, it allows you to search Ancient Gearbox or Gear Town from your deck or graveyard to hand. Actually, no, it's it, it's actually only deck. It's only deck to hand. But Gearbox, when it's added from deck or grave to hand, it can add any other Earth Machine with either 500 attack or defense, which Infinitrax used to get this monster, uh, Infinitrax Tunneler, which can shuffle back up to five monsters from your uh, five Earth Machine monsters from your graveyard to draw two. All right, so he searches a monster that can um, equip itself to a Super Heavy Samurai, then summon itself. Then he tributes the Link monster, so he summons a Tunneler, clearing his extra monster zone. Um, so now he can Link summon again. Um, and now he's going to Link all three into Apo. I think Apple would be the play here. Yes, sir. Three material Appaloosa. And now he has a draw two on Grave. So he has a one negate with Therion, three with Appaloosa. And, you know, since this is a deck with all monsters, I guess before Therion Regulus, there was no way to guarantee that you made an Omni negate because none of the Super Heavy Samurai cards really say negate on them. Uh, but now that we have cards like Regulus and we have cards like Appaloosa, that make it a lot easier to, you know, work off just like sim simple searchable cards that uh, negate the Omni negate. And, you know, it allows Super Heavy Samurai to make a, a stronger board. And then the Verna Sylphs as well, um, not only allow you to, you know, mill the Soul Piercer from deck like we saw earlier, but also allow you to extend so that um, even if you are met with opposition, you aren't completely like your turn isn't completely stopped like previously. So Werner Silves was, was a very big introduction for the deck. Now he has Ash in hand, he has some follow-up, he has scales that looks like a second Ash as well. So in in reality here, he has three three interruptions and his opponent's gonna start with Right Self, which would add a cash tier right here. I think this is a good Ash because he doesn't have a cash tier on board yet, meaning um, you you would not get punished by something like a Fenrir for activating this Ash. The only issue with the Super Heavy board is that none of his negates destroy, so even if they do negate the activation of, let's say, a Unicorn or a Fenrir, the Unicorn or Fenrir would still be able to banish a card from either Field or his extra deck. Now, he does have Unicorn, so Unicorn's going to be summoned out. I don't know if it's just me. I always like to place the cash tiers at, on the very left of the field. I don't know if it's just me. Like every time I play cash tiers in Gate Guardian, I always start with the left and work my way right. Because, you know, there are certain decks that just don't care about zones, zone placements. Like, um, I know I, I, I used to play Code Talker a lot and zone placements were like everything in that deck. And sometimes just playing a deck where you don't have to think about zone placement other than to play around like Relinquished Anima or something is really relaxing. So I always just start the same way every time. You really can't go wrong with playing in that left zone. And he's also going to triple tactics. I don't think he should Regulus here because... I mean, he might... Oh, okay, so he's going to have to Regulus then. Um, especially if he's taking... If he's uh, attempting to take a monster. But Talon's is in target, so I don't know why he pointed to Regulus. I'm 90% sure Talents does not target. It might, but I'm 90% sure it doesn't. So he's going to grab Theosis. So I'm wondering, like, how... What can Kashira really do in this game one? Or what can Super Heavy do in this game one? Because it looks like... We've already seen four cards out of this Kashira player's hand, meaning after this thrust, they have three cards left in hand. They have one Theosis. Best thing they can do is Theosis for Fenrir, go into battle phase, attack over Appaloosa, because you, you don't want to play with Appaloosa on board. You, you can attack over Appaloosa because your field spell would increase the attack of, you know, your monsters. Oh, he goes for a Rise Heart, really? That's interesting. I mean, maybe he already has a birth or something, but I, I definitely would have gone for Fenrir there. 
and they need Prosperities. I'm a little confused as to why he didn't go into Fenrir. Because Theosis just says a different attribute than the monster that you target, right? So why not just add Fenrir and then search her Rise Heart off Fenrir? No, like, why not add Fenrir, go into battle phase, attack over Appaloosa, and then main phase two, actually start your combo? Because then there'd be nothing left on his board. I don't mind him prosperity here. I just think it's a weird point to prosperity. Grabs Lance, you see another unicorn, Scareclaw. I think he goes either Lance or, Sar or, or, or Scareclaw here. He might go Ogre. But yeah, I think... Actually, no, Lance against Super Heavy is so redundant because <laughs> they don't play spells and traps. Um. Okay, so he goes into Castera Scareclaw here. Is he going to banish for... You see, now this is where I'm a little... in inexperienced with um Kashtira, so i'm a little i wouldn't know how to sequence this like because i know with a rise heart you'd want to wait till you have an exceed monster on board to activate its effect and he's banishing birth to make to make himself level seven yeah, so he banishes top three cards of his opponent's deck and Rise Heart becomes level seven. I still don't see why he didn't go into Fenrir and then search Rise Heart because the, you could have done the same thing with more monsters on board. It's not like we're an OCG and you're right and your <laughs> Fenrir is limited or something, you know? It's like, I know you got that nigga in your deck, but yeah, l let's, l let's see what he's cooking. Let's see what he's cooking. He's still explaining something and Okay, now he finally attacks over Apo. I mean, Unicorn normally has 25 attack anyway, so it's not even like there was any contest as to who was stronger. It was definitely the Unicorn. So he takes like, what, like 300 because they gain 200 for each different, or 100 for each different attribute. So that would be, that would make him 27. So he took 300 there. Whoa, 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 6650. Wait, did he try to use an effect under Appaloosa? Did he did he attempt to activate his Unicorn? There's no way. There's no shot he, he attempted to activate Unicorn under um under Appaloosa when he had ta talents and thrust in his hand. There's no way, right? I I, I probably didn't even catch that. All right. So he's banishing Theosis. He gets to add back Birth. So he has three level sevens on board. I mean, it's not exactly rocket science. He's gonna activate Burf here. Normal summon Fenrir? That's the only reason he wouldn't search Fenrir, right? Is if he already had it in hand. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, now I see, now I see what he's doing. Now, now I, now I understand. Man, this dude's taking so long just to make a play. Okay, so he's Fenrir searching for... Who is that? I can't tell what card that is. No idea what the hell he just searched for. But he did search a Kashtira. Alright. Uh, he's going to use all three going to her Rise Heart. Um, and then he passes turn... Okay. Wow, he plays Transporter. Is 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 that the Kaiju one? Where you tribute your opponent's monsters and summon it to their field? Alright, so he starts off with scales. Scales allows him to summon target uh Soul Piercer and Grave. Now scales was special summon because his opponent controlled two or more monsters than he did. Uh do we make Baguska here? Baguska would actually be really strong. But he wouldn't be able to do anything else this turn. I'm just going to skip forward. Because he's still thinking, still thinking. Oh my god, it's been like 20 seconds. Still thinking. 25 seconds, still thinking. Alright, he normal summons out Box. Um, Box doesn't do anything. It's been like nearly a whole minute now uh his opponent is going to a rise heart or
or not. No, he's gonna let him keep going. Okay. He's gonna link to to Nightmare Cerberus. Interesting. Okay. Uh, he gets to drop one to pop the Fenrir. I mean, to pop the Arise Heart. So, I believe Cerberus would be chain link one, Arise Heart would be chain link two to reattach one that's banished. Um, and he's going to Arise Heart effect chain link three so that he can banish one from his opponent's board. Yeah, he definitely he definitely banishes Soul Piercer. Don't don't. Oh, why would you go for Cerberus? What? You don't... Why would you not banish the card that says when I'm sent to the grave, plus one? Why would you not banish that card? That's just ridiculous, because now he can link that away into Scarecrow. Chain link one Scarecrow, chain link two Soul Piercer. The Scarecrow doesn't... Oh, Scarecrow does tar uh, discard for cost, so actually, it should have. Okay, well, yeah, he would have had to discard Ash anyway, but yeah. Um, whoa, why are you bringing back Scales? Scales is a hard once per turn. Ain't no way. Ain't no way you just brought back Scales. Wait, what? Um, I'm I'm kind of lost here. Why did he bring? Why did he not bring back Soul Piercer? Fuck it, Soul Peacemaker, Soul Peacemaker on Scarecrow, tribute, tribute, sir, uh, tribute special from deck. Is he gonna go for Wagon? Yeah, this is where I would have trouble with Super Heavy too. I mean, you could go into Rank Four, go into Zeus here, but I don't know how effective that would be. Right. So he gets to summon out Wagon in defense. Wagon's effect is when it's summoned, it gets to change its battle position. And when its battle position is changed, it gets to add a super heavy samurai soul monster from deck to hand. So he gets to either go for another soul piercer or for another extender of some kind. So he's gonna add the armor one, whatever that one does. I mean, I know that one you can equip it and then you could summon it after you equip it so free body and link one into relinquished anima okay nice yeah that's that's a fair game that that sure is a you know anima was sure pointing to that rise <laughs> to that rice heart um now what Oh, now he's using this Charmer monster because he can summon it by tributing something. I, I don't know what that card does, but let's see. Oh, and he gets to summon back Soul Piercer too. Holy shit. Yeah, okay. So you can summon this card from Hand or Deck by sending one face of Spellcaster and one level four or earth monster you control to the graveyard. Interesting. Wow. That's about 4k damage right there. Something like that. Something to that tune. So I wonder what he's going to do here. If, if, if there's no Zeus play at in main phase two, then what's What's to play here? It's great that it got to add back the um, the motherfucking Soul Piercer, but you should link Soul Piercer and this Charmer monster off, so that you may so you make a link to, and then you search your Soul Claw, which can then attach to your wagon, make another body. Then I don't know what you do from there, but you do something. <laughs> well, it looks like Soul Claw's already engraved. I don't think he plays another one. 
So he goes for Ballista again here. Soul Piercer goes off. Another Soul Monster. And he's going to link these two into Unicorn. Right, okay, so drop the Soul Monster, drop, the, shuffle back the Burf. Which seems great on paper, but he has nothing left. And we know this guy searched a Castira monster last turn thanks to Fenrir. Which I don't know why he didn't banish Soul Piercer. That's insane to me. Um, yeah, anyway. Past turn now. Unicorn should not be a problem in this scenario. Assuming he Fenrir searched Fenrir. Oh, okay, he searched Unicorn. So Unicorn effect. This should be game. There's no way this isn't game. Okay, yep, game one. Game one's over. That was a really long game one. Like the, this this whole VOD is like 56 minutes. So the fact that game one took so long is, is a little scary. But Super Heavy kind of had something going there. I'm still a little perplexed as to why he bring back scales instead of going another Soul Piercer to get another Super Heavy to hand. But yeah, I mean, a lot of the Super Heavies now, they sort of just don't do enough. Or the ones that do do things, they lock you into Super Heavies for the rest of the turn, like the Trumpeter and Thief. So you really have to know how to play ha you really have to get used to playing and m maneuvering some of these smaller pieces to make um, big boards, right? Uh, so it looks like Super Heavy drew kind of goaded here. All right, so he drew Ducklings and Haze, and he also drew a Soul Peacemaker. And he drew Scales, so yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so he ashes the Vernaself here. Uh, so I guess Normal Summon Scales would be the next order of business because that's that's really your only play you don't really have a play outside of that and it's not like you would stop because of one ash right you still have that super heavy in your grave you normal summon scales summon it back equip it with soul pierce maker tribute um go into scarecrow possibly the only thing you'd have to worry about here since he didn't imperm the scales i'm assuming he just has no follow-up play so i mean he has no other hand traps in hand so I would say the only thing you have to worry about here is potentially a, a Nibiru, but I know because of the last event, a lot of people were just off Nibiru or just not respecting Nibiru this event, especially Kashira players, right? Whose whole um, conundrum is, do we make a Rise Heart pass or do we go into some sort of extended combo that locks a few zones or do we go completely overextend into like five or seven zone lock, you know? All right, so he he goes into Anima, and then oh okay yeah you know this is this is a really smart play, um, because he gets to summon it from deck, that's really good. That's even, in some cases that's even better than summoning out Soul, um, Scarecrow. That's even better than summoning out Scarecrow, and in some cases because now you have a two thousand body on your board that's not blocking you from Link summoning, and he gets to bring back the Soul Pierce Maker. I mean, this, he gets to bring back the Soul Piercer, not the Soul Peacemaker. I keep getting these name confused. So he does have Imperm for the one effect, but he still gets to search, which is fine. I'm really wondering, how does he summon Riverstormer? Because I saw a Riverstormer in his extra deck, but I don't see a Brutal Dozer in his main deck. So I'm a little curious as to how he goes into... Um, River Stormer in his build. Now, because of this Imperm, I think our turn, like our potential for comboing is pretty much over. Um, Ash on the Verna Self was very effective. And now we're seeing our, open it, our opponent open with Prosperity, meaning they most likely don't have much because they open two, two hand traps, so two disruptions. Third card being Prosperity. What's the chances that these these under three cards in hand are actually significant? You know? So, all right, so Tactics, Prosperity, Ash, Theosis, Riseheart. 
and preparations. Wow, that's not the best, but okay. We're pulling the Theosis. Hopefully we have something like a Fenrir in hand, right? So four cards in hand. Starting with Ogre. Okay, yeah, I, I guess we did Brick. <laughs> well, not Brick, but I guess we didn't open the best possible hand. I know Ogre adds traps. Is there some sort of condition for Ogre adding a trap? I, I've never actually physically read the card, is what I should be saying. Okay, so it looks like he's getting preparations here. Yeah, so Ogre, uh, yep, once per turn during your main phase, add a cashier trap from deck to hand. Yeah. Yeah, traps are like the least used out of all the, you know, Kashtira cards. All you really see are the monsters and spells in most builds and then banish Big Bang for Rise Heart. You really don't see much love for the traps. Um, but I know preparations is good against trap cards, but that's kind of redundant against a deck like Super Heavy. So he Theosis into Fenrir. Fenrir is going to search here. I'm assuming Rise Heart because... Oh, he goes Unicorn. Okay, so he might already have Rise Heart in hand. My question is, is like, does Kashtira lose this in, in any scenario? Like, this super heavy player only has two cards in hand and they, they're they both engine. It has two engine cards in hand. No way he's, he's about to attack. There's no shot. No shot he's gonna go into battle phase. Oh, he gets to look at his opponents. What, what, what the fuck? The hell is he doing? Oh, okay. So you can excavate um, top five of your opponent's deck, manage an excavated card face down, and place the rest on top of deck in the same order. No way he's going to excavate that gamma. Really? Hmm. Okay. Back in the same order. And he's just attacking. Interesting. What is he cooking? Like, you searched Unicorn instead of Rise Heart, and you just went straight into battle phase without with only one monster that could attack. You're locked into Xyz. It might be better to just keep Fenrir on board at this point. Um, unless you have Burf. He goes into Shangri Era. Is he gonna Rise Heart now? Does he have it? He sets two and passes turn. So we saw Imperm in his hand, meaning these two set are preparations and Imperm. All right, so now he's Shangri Eras and he can Ash here. <laughs> because, like, knowing his opponent had Ash, he still went into Shangri Era. I'm a little perplexed. Why would you not just keep Fenrir on board? Fenrir was a way better interruption than Shangri Era was, right? So he norm sums out wagon. He's gonna have the imperm for it. Please tell me you imperm this. You have to imperm, right? Okay, that's fair. So how does Super Heavy come back from this? We're still at a full chunk of life points. You can make Link One go into get back your Soul Piercer, but what would that net you? That's only like an extra two monsters, right? He he already uses normal summon. I, I've played super heavy before and, I, and I, I can't even see the route. So this 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 dude's about to pull off something like just major fucking anime, you know, Scarecrow effect. He has to discard. Now we know Kashira has no more interruptions because he very stupidly played into Ash, which again, I just don't understand. Oh, bring back scales. Yeah, scales bring back Soul Piercer. Mm -hmm. And then he gets to make um, Ancient Gear Ballista here because he hasn't made Ballista this game yet. Oh, my brother in Christ, why are you touching that wagon? You already used his effect, wait. No, he didn't. He didn't get to use his effect because of Imperm. Right. Okay. Is the, cha the changing of battle position is not a once per turn effect, I'm assuming, for him to be able to do this. Let me pull up wagon. I'm on TCG player. <laughs> I'm pulling up wagon right now. Wait, why is he going to Claw? Why, why isn't he going to Soul Piercer? I guess he just wants to extra body, I guess. But yeah, he can equip. Um, and then from the equip zone, he could summon it back out. Yeah, yeah. So the changing of battle position effect of Wagon is is not once per turn. I, I can confirm this. So everything so far is legal. 
this this cashier player played right into this like i don't understand why you don't just keep fenrir on board and now he goes ballista ballista effect search gearbox gearbox would search tunneler because he already used soul claw and now he just activates preparations did i read preparations right i thought it was only for trap cards Oh, during the, either player's turn, you can special summon one of your cashier monsters that's banished during your hand. Okay, so he summons out Fenrir, uh, Unicorn, excuse me. And then Unicorn is going to be able to pull off its effect because to banish one from extra deck. So he gets to stop his opponent's, you know, I guess you could say final play, like whatever his opponent's play might be. He gets to banish one card from extra deck. So as long as he's smart about what card he banishes, he might still be able to, you know, get something from this. Hold on, is he not banishing a card from his extra deck? Oh, okay, now he is. I'm like, what, what, what took you so long? Like, what, are you, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, so banish access code, that's fine. Uh, so he's gonna link to you with uh, Tunnler and Ballista. Now, because he's not playing a uh, Brutal Dozer, he doesn't get locked into Earth Machine, which is great. I think that's the one benefit of Super Heavy over Earth Machine is that they are not locked into anything. So he goes Unicorn here, shuffle back, maybe the Shangri Era. Hmm. Yeah. Does Unicorn have enough defense? To handle an attack from Unicorn, <laughs> does Cash Terra Unicorn have enough, have enough defense to handle an attack from Nightmare Unicorn? I believe it does not. Wow. Okay. And Wagon attack directly. Interesting. You know, it probably would have been better if he just would have searched Big Bang. I don't know why he searched Preparations. Because Big Bang, right? Big Bang has an effect when you have a cast your exceed monster on board right so big bang yeah yeah if a cast your exceed monster is on field and a player controls two or more monsters they must banish monsters they control face down so they only control one monster wow and then into a two material apo that's kind of petty but i like it yeah big bang would have been a way better card for him to search than um preparations over here oh he's gonna pankatrops to attack into apo time is nearly done and this super heavy player has like no cards left in deck he draws one in <laughs> for Soul Peacemaker. Oh, he gets, he still has to shuffle back in grave. But can he close out this game in, before these six minutes goes up? He's taking a lot of time with his decisions. They're definitely gonna get some sort of time extension. Cause I know this super heavy player, like he's taking like a minute to make some decisions, which they probably gave him like a slow play or something. All right, so banish with Tumblr, shuffle back five. He's definitely gonna get back to Scarecrow's Scarecrows, Ballista, Box, Soul, Peacemaker. It, interesting, does he only play one Soul Peacemaker? So that he always just searches it and he never has to actually, you know, open multiples? Because that might be, that might be kind of goaded. Because if that's the case, then his plays make a lot more sense to me. I guess to draw two. Therion? No, that is uh, a Pankatrops of his own. Interesting. <laughs> Tribute. Yeah. Wow. Um. <laughs> one for one. Nine for eye makes the world go blind. He's gonna link one into Scarecrow. He already uses normal summon. It's interesting that he plays Big Bang. I, I like because like I I don't see how he he actually like goes into it. But okay. Oh, wait, Scarecrow isn't on summon. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. Scarecrow, I really thought Scarecrow was on summon. It's an ignition effect. Oh my God, this is goaded. All right, he's gonna summon Big Ben K and then Soul Piercer, all right. He's gonna go for this guy. That allows him to attack twice, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Wow. Interesting. 
It's 1 1 on the board, and with only three minutes left in a round, I wonder how this shit goes. Game three. So who's gonna go first here? Cash goes set one pass. Oh my god. What's with these cash players? Oh, he's playing the Charmer. He's playing the Aza. So Aza discard. Shifter. Okay. You should have shifted in standby or something. If you're if you were gonna shift to your opponent, you should have done that before. I'm 90% sure. Hold on. I'm 90% sure if he would have shifted before. Um Oh, Regulus. Yeah, look at that. He he wouldn't have even been able to summon that Regulus if he would have shifted in fucking standby phase. Hold on. Let me let me pull up Oza real quick. Oh, okay. So Oza does say discard. So it would still work under Shifter, but he would not have gotten this theory on. So that's that's still yeah. And he, and he he just goes for game here. There's 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 nothing stopping him. My man's opened what fucking Ash Shifter, and uh, wait, did he really set the Ash Blossom? There's no way he set that Ash Blossom. Hold on. Hold on. I, I, I got to go back. No fucking way he just said Ash. How bad does your hand have to be? All right. I, I don't get why he linked off the Soul Pierce Maker. I mean, the Soul Piercer, but all the more power to him, I guess. Um, Yeah, this thing has zero attack. What's the point of linking into this? Summons Pank. Summon Ash, Baron. Baron is legit your best bet here. All right, time is called. And yeah. Well, that sure was an interesting game. Um, you know, I was a little going into this. I was a little like, you know, Super Heavy Samurai doesn't need that Cyberstorm Axis support. Yes, it does. Did you see this? They were, you know, they were kind of goaded making making that comeback game too. Um, but that's th this this Castira player, David K. David Castira over here, David Castira. He misplayed so hard going into Shangri Era here. This this most likely cost him the game, because he didn't search Big Bang and then he went into Shangri Era. I don't know if he plays Big Bang in his list, but at the very least, if you would have played Big Bang, right? Um, when he was at like, where was it? It was a point where he had like four monsters on board when he was at this point right here. And I'll, I'll pull up Big Bang again just to make sure I'm not, you know, smoking that pipe. Big Bang. Yep. Literally reads if a cash deer exceed monsters on the field and a player controls two or more monsters, they must banish monsters they control face down. So they only control one monster. So he literally would have been able to force his opponent out of all three of his monsters right here if that was a Big Bang instead of a, you know, preparations, which no idea why he searched preparations still. Um, and still no idea why he s summoned Shangri Era knowing his opponent had Ash on the top of his deck. This makes no sense. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I mean, Super Heavy Samurais, kind of funny deck. Um, and it only gets better from here, right? Um, if you follow the OCG or if you, you know, listened or, you know, if you saw the beginning of the video, you understand this deck is only going to get stronger from here and no idea, um, how well it's going to do in the TCG, but hopefully it can produce the same results as what OCG got going on, if not better. I don't believe this guy topped, but can we see a deck list? Oh, here we go. Deck profile. Okay. Uh, this does. Yep. Soul Piercer, 
triple wagon? I can't tell my brother. I'm just gonna assume these are all three ofs, right? Okay, and he is only playing one ofs of his smaller soul names. Because you can recycle them, yep. Yeah? Hmm, soul break armor at three. So what's the point of the transporter? Oh, FTK, okay. Yeah, the relinquish anima combo was crazy. Yeah, it's just a summoning condition. You just play it. You can't even ash it. Oh, okay. That's how you make Rivet Stormer. Yeah, I was wondering, because, like, how... Where do you get this? Because I know if you summon Transporter, you're locked that turn. Oh, he plays Train. Okay. I wonder if he plays a uh, Super Anger Knuckle. Uh, Bolt. Heavy Train Anger. Whatever the fuck that thing's called. Because that's a resource loop with uh, Bullet Train. And you get to add back box. And then that sort of solves the bo the drawing box issue. All right, two flourishing hills, seedlings. Okay, that's that's what it was called. I always just call it haze. All right, flowering fields. Okay. Yeah, I had to make sure. I'm like, wait, I I know you play the the, the mill one. You see, the the great thing about Alza is that she's good now. She's really just a consistency card because. Soul Piercer and Soul Peacemaker are really everything, and, and Wagon. Like, Soul Piercer and Wagon are the, the ones that you really want to see. Um, and so that's only, what, like 6 and 40? That's still, like, uh, 6 out of 10 hands. You're, you're going to see one of these two. And you also want to see Scales. But um, with Aza, you know, that makes it 8 and 40, which gives you, like, 7 out of 10 hands, I believe. That That's what it... Um, averages out too so the double oz is actually great because now it's like you can search literally any um earth monster with 1800 or less attack right yeah and you have to search the same type as what you discard yeah gamma's great yeah and even in even in uh even post cyberstorm access once we get the bike i believe bike also discards itself to search so the gamma theory here actually works out pretty well Half of our starters need us to discard, like every Vernosilf, Aza, Bike. So having Gamma in hand to make sure that that thing still resolves anyway, or the, the effect still resolves anyway, is actually a great way to um, protect your combo lines or to have some sort of um, disruption for your opponent's disruption. All right, so two Scarecrow. Anima Ballista, yep, River Stormer. This is so interesting. Cerberus, I still, it's still hard for me to believe that he had a rise heart. He saw a card that said, if it goes to grave plus one, and then he saw Cerberus and he's like, hmm, which one should I banish face down that makes it hard for them to access this card for the rest of the game? Hmm, let me banish the Cerberus. Like he was probably more scared of like an access code or something then considering that Super Heavy is just a deck full of small little monsters that just build up this, you know, that work together and build this resource loop to where it's 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 kind of like Earth Machine, but like less restricting. Um, so you have more variety in your like extra deck and cards you can play. So I don't see why you would go on, into a Link monster that literally does nothing after it's on summon effect versus the card that says I go plus one after I go to grave. I just don't get it. Oh, he got double Sariuja. This is this is a probably big ass combo deck if you're playing double Sariuja. Like yeah uh, when you Sariuja into another Sariuja, that's when you know that you are the combo of all time. That is the combo of all all time kind of deck. Like that's what Six Samurai does, I think. I don't know if they yeah, actually, yeah, they do play double Sarajuja. They Sarajuja into Sarajuja to dig for like their um, gateway and their pieces and stuff just to guarantee that they get their fucking loop going on. Um, Apo, yep. Axis Code, Underworld Goddess, Bagusk, Babuska. <laughs> uh, let's see side deck. All right, Nib. Troll, okay. Okay, play Earth Kaiju. Pink Traps, really strong with Vernosilfs. Which, you know, in, in this deck, the anti-evenly 
Lancia seems pretty good. Although your end boards really aren't like that big, you know? Like this is more of a I'm trying to OTK deck than a I'm gonna make this big ass board kind of deck. So eccentric. Oh, okay, so he plays them because he wants to get rid of spells and traps without actually playing spells and traps. I mean, the Time Lord also spell trap removal. And I, yeah, that's it. Okay, well, glad we were able to get that deck profile in at the end, you know? We got to see the feature match, we got to see the deck profile. Really uh, interesting stuff we got going on with Super Heavy here. Um, and his, his theory is really solid. He, he, I don't think I saw any big misplays on his side um, throughout the, the feature match. Like, I think he, he knew what he was doing he didn't top, but um, it was still an amazing game to watch and to watch him beat Kashira, a Kashira player who just did not, you know, um, play the game correctly. We take those. OK, so um, good stuff to Super Heavy Samurai. And hopefully this inspires more people to play the deck pure. And I know it's going to be a meta contender come next month anyway but still I'm, I'm just saying you know um try it out now you know if you're picking up all the cards now might as well try it out see how you like it um and maybe you can get something going all right boys this is gonna have to be all for me been your boy nisho here signing out